Hello. For the past seven years, I've been working at the intersection of art and artificial intelligence as a technologist, an artist, and an educator. In my most recent body of artistic work, a series of listening pieces, I've been exploring the idea of taking a technology, machine learning, which is often used for coercive purposes like surveillance, and transforming it into a medium for creative play. Machine learning is all about data, and the entire world of data for a given problem is huge, so a single program can only examine a tiny fraction of the available information. This is called induction, or reasoning about an entire population from a small sample. An American could easily grow up having never seen a black swan, a bird which is very common, in fact, the national bird of Western Australia. From this, they could easily form the false generalization that all swans are white. This is a classic example of the flaws of inductive reasoning. Inductive bias is the set of assumptions that a programmer makes when deciding what aspects of the data to focus on, how best to represent and learn from it. The people who are affected by the flaws and biases in these programs are not the developers, of course, but the end users and very often the subjects of the system. The people who actually do the coding and make these kinds of decisions very rarely interact with the users directly. As we increasingly allow machine learning and computer models to automate human activities like surveillance, policing, and war, these hidden biases that are only exaggerated in real-world messy situations will play out in invisible but unjust ways. We imagine the computer to be objective when it is anything but. So this idea of inductive bias in machine learning and um, more generally surveillance technology has been the subject of my most recent artistic research. And these images that you see here, this image and the next one, are from Listening Post, which is an installation I did in Buffalo, New York in 2009. And the, this element of the piece was at a train station downtown, and there was another element of the piece in a storefront. And this picture is from Totem, which is a piece which is up right now at Issue Project Room in Brooklyn, so you should all go visit this and check it out. Um, both of these pieces explore this idea of inductive bias using very similar technology. They begin by taking an audio recording of their immediate environment, and it's a three-minute recording, and that file is then sent to a speech recognition engine. In this case, I'm using Java and Sphinx 4. The recognition engine outputs a transcript, and that transcript is then used to chunk that audio file down into component pieces based on where it thinks the word boundaries are. That transcript is then also sent to a natural language processing engine. And in this case, I'm using Python and NLTK. And that's used to attempt to tag the grammatical part of speech of each word in the transcript. So once these words are tagged and processed, they are stored in these neural network-inspired memory structures. And the idea here is that um, the words and the grammatical structures become like attractors in memory. So they grow stronger based on the frequency of their occurrence. And in this way, the internal structure of the memory of the piece comes to mirror the external structure of sound in its environment. Now, while the audio data is being processed, these pieces begin to speak, recombining and vocalizing these overheard sounds to create this kind of localized language. And here you can see this language accumulating, building up. And you, in this slide as well, you can see the language building up in the storefront uh, component of the Buffalo installation. These works are conceptual explorations of a technology and a medium. They are political, but also fetishistic. They describe both my fascination and disgust with a field toward which I'm continually fighting to balance my attraction and repulsion. It is precisely up to those of us who find ourselves so enchanted by these technologies to provide the critical framework for their subversion. Thank you. <laughs>